Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. We're so happy to have you today. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we're gonna give you five activities to boost reading and writing skills in your child. So if you are watching this video and your child struggles with those underlying reading and writing skills and you don't know why or you're trying to get to the bottom of it, let's dive into a couple of the underlying reasons. One reason might be that your child is struggling with dyslexia, dysgraphia, or dyscalculia. These are all three different learning disabilities that affect reading and writing skills. Something else you want to rule out is potentially ADHD or sensory processing disorder. We know that those impact the ability to retain information, learn information, process information, so we want to make sure that we're ruling that out. Another potential reason could be retained primitive reflexes. We have a lot of information on primitive reflexes, so if you're curious to learn more, we'll link some information down in the description. But studies show that retained primitive reflexes do negatively impact reading and writing skills. Another thing to look into are underlying ocular motor, visual motor challenges, visual perceptual challenges. This isn't necessarily how well your child can see or their visual acuity, this is really how the eyes are working together. Are they converging? Are they tracking well? Are they able to copy from the board? Are they getting lost? Those underlying visual skills can really tell us a lot about their ability to read and write. Another one could be low muscle tone. This is different than muscle strength. Muscle tone can affect the way a child is able to sit at the table or the desk, the way that they're able to hold their pencil. It can even affect their ocular motor skills that Rachel was just mentioning. If they have low muscle tone throughout their body, it can cause them to feel more tired and fatigued a lot faster than their peers. The last one we're gonna to mention today are skills like bilateral coordination or crossing midline, because believe it or not, your eyes have to be able to cross midline and work together in order to successfully read and write. So when they aren't working together, when the body isn't working to cross midline, the eyes, the brain, it's not working together, we're going to have difficulty reading and writing. We always, always recommend finding out the underlying reason why a child is struggling with reading, writing, or any other thing. So that's why we wanted to bring this up at the beginning of the video, because once you identify the reason why, you can personalize the strategies to your child based on their specific needs. Now, if you're curious to learn more about any of the things we just mentioned, we'll link some information in the description because we have other videos and podcast episodes and blog posts that can provide you a lot of helpful information to learn more about those. All right, now that you know kind of the underlying potential why, you're gonna to go to your research and figure, see if you can figure it out. We're gonna share with you kind of our five favorite ways to work on those underlying skills to really boost reading and writing skills. And the first one starts with saccades. Now saccades are the way that the eye muscles move back and forth without the head actually rotating. So the eyes are moving separately from the head. We created a free visual chart that you can actually work on these saccades with your child. Now really what you're gonna work on is just having the child track the items left to right, right to left without moving their head. And we'll put a link to this free download in the description for you to check out, download, and use, and hopefully it will help build those saccades in order to improve reading and writing skills. The next one is to do infinity loop tracing activities. Now the infinity loop is that sideways figure eight, and what we like to do is to draw the infinity loop on a piece of paper, tape it on the wall at eye level for the child, making sure that the center of the infinity loop is at their midline, and have them alternate using their dominant and non-dominant hand to trace along that infinity loop. We like to use both sides of the body to really get both sides of the brain working together. And this is really great for visual tracking, crossing midline, and getting those hand-eye coordination skills going because they're using their finger or a pencil to trace. Another thing you can do is add letters or numbers or shapes along the path, and they can call out each item as they reach it as they're tracing the path. 
The next one we're going to talk about is one of our favorites. They're all our favorites, but this one's really cool. It's called a BPDQ chart because you're working on all of those letters with a little curve, right? A B, a P, all lowercase, D, and a Q. They all have those little curves to them, the big line down and the little curve or the big line, you know, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we're going to work on identifying those letters in different multi-sensory ways. So you can write all of those letters randomly on a chart. You can tape it on the wall. You can have the child just read the letters as they're going through. You can add a metronome and have them say the letters in order with the metronome. You can have them point to the direction of the little curve with their arms and their legs. So if it's a P, they're gonna lift their right arm up. If it's a D, they're gonna put their right arm down or they're gonna stick their right leg out and so forth. You can have them jump into the different quadrants. So you can tape a square on the ground, kind of like a four square, a mini four square, and they can jump into the different quadrants where that curve would be. So there's a lot of multi-sensory ways that you can work on those underlying skills because oftentimes if a child is struggling in any of the areas we mentioned earlier, they're probably going to have a difficult time recognizing those letters, identifying those letters, reversing those letters. So working on that outside of handwriting is actually more beneficial than just practicing the handwriting. Yes. The next one is animal walks. And we love animal walks because they are going to activate the different muscle groups that your child needs to be able to sit at the table or the desk, hold an upright posture, hold their pen or pencil for writing, and then you can also incorporate having them do animal walks along a taped path to incorporate more of a visual component to help their eyes as well. Animal walks are really great to do before a reading and writing task to get all of those muscles like woken up and ready to go. So it's a great preparatory activity. Yes. All right, the last one we're gonna share with you is another one that works on those ocular motor skills. We call, well, there's not really a good name that we call this, but we, we refer to it as the handheld and wall-mounted activity. So, it's a long name, but it's okay. Yeah, it, it just really <laughs> describes what we're doing here. So we're gonna grab a chart. So maybe it's a chart that has letters on it and we're gonna hold on to it. And then maybe we have another chart with numbers on it and we're gonna tape that onto the wall. So what you're gonna do is have the child alternate between reading a letter or a number on their handheld chart and then reading it out on the walls. So you can see that their eyes are going from the handheld paper to the wall mounted paper and that's simulating copying from the board or visually tracking from the board. Oftentimes we'll see these kiddos struggle and get lost when they're copying from the board. It will take them eons of time to try to copy a simple instruction from the board. So we wanna take it away from the classroom, we wanna practice these underlying skills, and we wanna just you know, improve their ability to copy from that board. Now you can make it a little bit more exciting, you can have them stand on one foot, you can have them sit on a therapy ball, you can have them bounce while they're reading the charts too, you could have them turn around backwards and twist, um, twist each way left and right as they're rotating. You can have them bouncing on a trampoline, really whatever they're gonna be motivated to do, let them do it, work on those underlying convergence and divergence skills to improve their ability to read and write. All right, we gave you five really great activities to try. You can do them every single day as part of the sensory diet routine. You can incorporate them into the classroom as part of their preparatory warm-up activities before a reading or writing activity. Try them out, see how they go. Do them with your child so that it's more motivating and fun. Keep it short and sweet if it's challenging so that the child doesn't get upset by trying to do something hard, but just try them. Yep. We do want to leave you with one more resource that we absolutely love, especially for those kiddos who are a little bit more motivated to work on these skills on a screen. There's a website called iCanLearn.com, E-Y-E. It's a fun little play on words. But there's tons of handouts that you can print from there. There's games that you can play that work on those underlying ocular motor and visual perceptual and visual motor skills. So we'll link that in the description as well.
All right, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it, leave us a comment and let us know your thoughts. Share this video with a friend and then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any concerns about your child's ability to read and write, make sure that you first and foremost bring that up with your pediatrician. Make sure that you advocate for an occupational therapy evaluation. Maybe you go see a developmental optometrist. Check these underlying skills and make sure that they are not impacting your child. And uh, with that, we will plan on chatting with you next week. No, I just feel like they're not gonna. There's not gonna be any bloopers because we're so boring. And <laughs> you just made a I blooper. Just, yeah, you did. <laughs>